In February last winter, me and my wife Heidi decided to drive our electric car all the way down from Trondheim in Norway to the heart of the Swiss Alps. Let's just say it was far away from a walk in the park, with a charging system that still has some improvements Different to be done. System. Typing my credit card once again. Few charging points and slow chargers, demanding us to download new apps and register credit card details on almost every single stop made the trip challenging. However, things started to change as we crossed the border to Switzerland. Things started to look more like home, both mountains and charging facilities, which finally gave us time to start focus on what we were here for. So we just arrived to Engelberg. We had 30 centimeters overnight and we have plugged in our car and now we're going skiing. Hopefully our battery is 100% when we get back. Good light and uh, good snow, so I think it's uh, good to go. biggest dumps of the season and the snow in Engelberg was as good as it gets. Although someone told us that the Gemschock lift in Andermatt, which is one of the most iconic gondolas of freeride skiing in European Alps, had been shut down during this last storm and that it was supposed to open the day after. With a 100% charge battery we decided to leave Engelberg and do the one and a half hour drive east to Andermatt. Radisson in Andermatt. It's gonna be good with a nice dinner, have a good night's sleep, and then hopefully go skiing tomorrow. We're ready for some powder. Shoes and a ton of taboos and bears 
came down from the mountain and had some really good skiing here in Andermatt. Yeah, and now we're going to meet up with Nicolas Bornstein from uh, Protector Winter Switzerland and Vanessa Kuhn from the tourist office. Yeah, and they're going to tell us about sustainability here in Andermatt. It's going to be good. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. My name is Vanessa Kuhn and I'm the communications manager in Andermatt Swiss Alps. This whole town, new town center, should be only a renewable energy? It already is 100% uh, renewable energy. We use water and uh, wind energy, mainly water, and about a third is uh, wind energy. So these are the five main keys uh, for what we're doing um, to be more sustainable. Um, the mobility uh, obviously is uh, about the CO2 reduction. Then food, we have uh, banned all plastic and pet in the restaurants. And outdoor, we have this partnership also with uh, Protect Our Winters. My name is Nicholas. I'm the founder of POW in Switzerland and we're working together here with Andermatt. What are Protect Our Winters Switzerland doing to contribute with the sustainability here in Andermatt? Well, we launched this year together with the Andermatt uh, Ski Resort and Swiss Alps this program called Andermatt Responsible, where we try to talk about everything that the resort does in the sustainability sector. So it goes from energy to food to um, heating to real estate, outdoor skiing, you name it. Basically it covers everything. Yeah. For us it's really important to focus on mobility because that's where you have the biggest CO2 emissions in a ski resort, somewhere between 50 and 70 percent. And so we strongly believe in electrifying our transport system, but we also believe that it's necessary to have more and better public transport options to go skiing in the mountains. What is the POW's main focus in the ski resort? In the ski resort, what we've worked together a lot is on the whole gastronomy sector. We've managed to get all plastic and pet bottles out of the restaurants, that's 15 mountain restaurants. We've also managed to get um, free water fountains everywhere. So there's no more plastic on the whole mountain, which is a great contribution to our health and uh, safe water. Yeah. Perfect. I really like this whole idea about Andermatt being more responsible. And I hope that more resorts around the world start to move in the same direction in the future. Skiing without getting that bad consciousness about the environment is a true magical feeling and it's just a way to appreciate skiing even more. Even though charging facilities through Europe in general is not as good as we want it to be, things are starting to move in the right direction. In my opinion, driving an electric vehicle through the Swiss Alps has come to a point where it's actually easier than a fossil car. Leaving one hotel with a fully charged car and then coming to another hotel that also has charging facilities feels so convenient and it's just something I feel that all hotels need to install in the coming years. One hotel that has taken this seriously is Hotel Beau Séjour, which has also taken us to our final destination on our electric adventure, Champry. A small cozy mountain village on the border to France, where you can access 650 km runs on both Swiss and French side. The ski resort is called Porte du Soleil and has some serious terrain which is perfect for backcountry and freeride skiers.
ended up getting a tight schedule on our way back to Scandinavia and had to drive non-stop, including a total of 14 charging stops for 51 hours from Champery in Switzerland to Åre in Sweden. EU is constantly expanding their charging facilities and we hope that in 5 years getting around in Central Europe will be just as easy with an electric car as a regular car is today. We like to call that the convenient truth.